<laughs> Part of the original drawing that I cut out to fit inside this 1 8 inch lip on the rotor, as you see, and then I also got a piece of plywood, quarter inch plywood sitting down there at the bottom that I want to have cut in the circle on. This piece of poster board is going to be glued onto this and then where the magnets are, are going to be cut out. You notice I got the magnets set up here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to knock that one out of line just a little bit. Put this up here. Oh, didn't knock it out. Ow! Boy, oh, that hurt. Okay, as you see, I have a little bit more of a gap right there than I do here. It's okay. It's an aluminum ruler. Our gap has now disappeared. And if you got this lined up on your dot that you have on the edge of your rotor, which I made off of this template, this was the only magnet that was out. I measured 1 and 13 16 between the edge of magnet to edge of magnet, or 44 millimeters, whichever you prefer. But and then I lined them all up like this, and I checked to see if this was equal across the dot to make sure these things are centered just right. Anyway, so they're all there. Now that I got them all cut, I can't slide them off the edge because I have an eighth inch lip, and I can't slide them this way because I ruined the form that I'm fixing to put on my rotor, I mean on the piece of wood, as a template to line my magnets. That's okay. We already cut these out. Put your thumb against the magnet, then slide this over instead of letting it bang into it. Then you just slice right down the side. Makes a perfect cut every time. One on both sides, and then up here in the front. Use two hands and don't get your finger between the magnet and the blade. But now this is all cut out, this should be able to just pop right up. And then we slide magnets off. Alright, I worked my finger up around the edges and broke all this basically loose. And that pops up. There we go. A little bit over here. It looks like that one's ready to fall off as it is. Nice. Perfect size and shape of the magnet. And now we have a template. Okay, top dead center on one of your north magnets. You notice that the line isn't exactly on the red line. It's just off to the side because that's where the razor cut. And I've got this, the edge of this little file line. I turn the file sideways like this and use the edge of it as a corner puts a nice little edge it lines right up with the edge of the magnet and right up at the edge of the magnet this one here is top dead center it's a little bit deeper okay well I put it on the wood and I noticed that it's just a little this is the actual size it needs to be and that's the actual size of the wood so I decided uh, not to glue it and then try to cut it but uh, I did trace everything and I labeled top dead center right there and so I've got it all set up, ready to give a nice cut to, and then I'm going to take off the outside. I want you to see right here, I swapped some audio for you, so you didn't have to listen to it. But this is my Sawzall. This is my Sawzall wild at, wired up to the side of my uh, table saw. Uh, tried my scroll saw. It kept popping the blade about once, uh, about every inch. I figured that'd be kind of time consuming. I wanted to get this done. It jumps up a little bit because it's leaned forward and it catches the wood a little bit, but it worked kind of like using a scroll saw, except I'm using the other, uh, working from the other side. And I don't have a bandsaw. This worked more like a bandsaw, but with the jumping that you get from a scroll saw. There we go. Got all those cut out up to where I got to go across the other part here. Got a scroll saw, but it loses the blades. So I said, what's like a scroll saw? Kind of like a bandsaw. Mmm, looks like my sawzall. There's a better view. Sawzall's got a uh, wire wrapped around the trigger and tightened up just so I'd have it at low RPM. Wire goes across here, one right there. You can see going into the side and coming around, tightening it up there. The rest of it just hangs and stays straight. A little cantankerous, but I'll tell you what, it knocks this out real fast. Okay, as you see, I got one of these already knocked out. Two parts of the chisel. There's a beveled side, then there's a flat side. Put the flat side on a solid part of your surface. Set it right in the middle of your line. And just okay. Let me get my hat on here. There we are. You can barely see through the camera. If you notice right up here at the top, I got three little notches. Uh, right there is the biggest one. That's the center, and that's both sides of this magnet for top dead center. All right. Anyway, right down here is a lug directly in line with it. That's my top dead center look. There's five. If I put 12 magnets on this thing and I get the wrong one on the second one, 
these magnets aren't going to match up. Where this one goes, I'll have a north magnet, and on the other one, I'll have a south magnet, and they have to line up straight. That's the whole reason for marking this out. When I get the all thread through from the hub, and I set the other one down on top of it with no magnets, I'll make the mark on the other disc. But anyway, back to the template. We uh, finished it out. I sanded it with my Dremel and also sanded the edges with the belt sander till it got right down to the cardboard shape. This way, it fits in where it doesn't move. It fits right inside that eighth inch lip and that's what I wanted. So I've got her set perfect and these are perfectly lined out. As I sanded, I've checked it with the straight edge and everything. I notice these edges right here are beveled a little bit because I had to sand with the Dremel like this because you can't do it straight through here. It gets in the way. That's okay. That helps guide the magnet down. That'll be sweet. Well, I've got me some half inch here. I wanted stainless steel. It's a little bit out of my range. Anyway, the nuts are square like this and with the half inch, the half inch has a little bit of slack inside the holes. So in order to keep it straight and centered, I had to taper some of the nuts. You can see how I grinded them off here. That's what this is over here. Right here I have the drill with the half inch all thread. And that comes all the way over to here where I've got it nice. I have to make sure this all thread is straight. And I got this double nutted on the end and cinched against itself. Then, while that's spinning, I take my angle grinder at 45 degrees. A little less of an angle is probably better. It keeps him from coming loose. But this will center it up in the hole. about here, you're going to see a lot of steam come off that. I don't want to get this hot. It'll ruin the temper in it and anneal it and make it soft. Back to it. Just like, just like regular machine work. Alright, well before we can cast, uh, put magnets on and cast them, there's other things we got to do. Number one, this is a 27 64 inch drill bit. That has to drill the holes, three holes, through here. The reason why you want to do this before you do your magnets is you don't want all this metal shavings going all over your magnets. So these three holes got to be drilled here and then they have to be tapped. I have a tap that's 13 threads per inch, uh, half inch. It accepts the half inch all thread. And that's what we're going to use for jack and screws. You can't set this down when you go to assemble this without having the jack and screw, uh, the jack and screws. This comes down and lowers it down safely without getting your hands inside. All right, what's worse than drilling uh, five holes? Drilling three holes. So we're drilling five holes. One, two, three, four, five. The reason being, if I cut out this much metal from right here and here and then one over here, so I've got five holes here. The reason why you want this to balance, this whole piece is balanced. Everything on this rig is balanced so far. On an engine, on the crank, it has counterweights to keep the crank from messing up. The harmonic balancer can't take care of all of it. So you don't want this, you don't want to say, okay, we'll balance it when we put the blades on it. Well, balancing it when you put the blades on is one of the best things you can do. And it is the last thing you do. But keeping the rest of the unit in balance, just like on an engine, keeps the crank from breaking or whatever. You don't want the stress of any imbalance on this, giving an imbalance on the blades uh, to fight it in high wind. A smooth, balanced machine throughout will run for years. Drilling these uh, holes out with a smaller drill bit, I used a 5 seconds drill bit. The end of your drill is not very pointed for a bigger drill, so always tap out a pilot hole. It also helps you get more accurate. This has to be drilled 
straight up and down just like a drill press did it mine's out right now so I'm just gonna have to make sure this goes in perfectly square and there's the second hole like I said that's a lot of metal dust Mary had a little lamb its fleece was black as ink it chewed the paper off the wall and spit it in the sink Okay, as you can see, I've got plenty of oil all over everything, including the tap. Tighten this up, and we're ready to go. At first, doesn't want to take at first. Just kind of have to give it a hand. It's nice to have a tap and die. Sometimes starting these holes a little bit hard. You can't go back far. There we go. got to be careful to keep this thing exactly straight up and down. There we go. I think we actually got one thread in. Almost a thread. There we go. She's starting to grab. Ah. Alright. Back it out. You want to thread it in carefully to the point where you were. Right, there we go. One quarter turn. And from here I want to go back a half turn. I'm going to go one quarter turn, keeping it straight up and down, double checking, there we go, go back to my three quarters, then I'm going to go, we started here, one more quarter turn, and then I'm going to back up a whole turn, I'm going to go one more quarter turn, back up a whole turn, or a little more, at this point you want to put some oil on it, let it run right down the bit into the hole. Very good, very good. One quarter turn, boy, that got easy. There we go. Clean your bit up. Get all the iron, get all the iron files out of there. Spray that hole out. Then we gotta clean all this up before we can even think about putting magnets on it. Okay, now we're tapping the holes. I got a one half, 13 threads per inch. You go one quarter turn towards, and then you back up all the way around, a little bit past that, right back to your last position. You go one quarter turn more. It's a little bit tricky getting it started, so basically, I looked at my bit, and I had a little problem with that, so I started this one off camera. I resharpen them. I'm not going to get into how to resharpen them. About a quarter to a half turn, whichever this really allows, with not too much strength. It's starting to sail a lot easier. I think we done made it through. And we are through. One quarter turn forward. One and a quarter back. One quarter forward. One and a quarter back. Now that, that is tapped. Looks like my sharpening job did a nice job. No damage. Came from the factory messed up. Okay, there we are. All three are tapped. The end piece of all thread is setting through. These two are perfect. This one's got a little bit of a lean. Not bad for not having a drill press. The next part, we'll be putting the magnets on and possibly casting it. We also, what we have left to do, we got to take this bearing assembly completely apart and clean all this up. And the seal here in the back is bad, so we've got a replacement for that. This says, Grease Seal 1.719 fits 3,500 pound trailer act. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Believe me, I've got a lot of footage. A few things got done out of order, so basically I've got a lot more video coming up and the magnet rotor will be next. And I'll put the other video on uh, standby showing you how to do this. The next one we're going to show you how to take all this apart and get it all cleaned up and inspected to see if there's any damage or and maybe you have to put new bearings in. And we'll grease it all back up. I'll show you how to pack the bearings. It's great for when you do a brake job. You'll be able to uh, do your rotors as well. Take your rotors off, pack your bearings. You might as well replace the bearings in anyway. So you're going to get a little bit of automotive school here. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. Thank you.